O Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. When reading this, we can see that when mentioning ruler in Israel, most people tend to associate it more with the physical aspect than the spiritual one. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Now, when comparing these two Bible verses, we can see a clear difference. They both speak of the same content, but there is a distinction in the expression. In the first verse, it talks about the ruler in Israel, which seems to have a very political and physical meaning. However, in Matthew, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. When we read this, we can immediately sense its spiritual nature. Here, this person is not coming to rule or lead politically, but as a shepherd guiding the people of Israel. At that time, what were the people of Israel expecting? Were they waiting for someone like King David or King Solomon who helped them escape from physical rule? They thought the Messiah would appear as a secular king, not expecting someone to lead spiritually, right? But when comparing these two verses, we see that God prophesied that the one he promised would not be a physical ruler, but a spiritual ruler. So when we read the Bible, we must meditate carefully to understand the deeper meaning of the word. If we only look at the surface of the text, it is easy to misunderstand, just as the people of Israel did at that time. In the book of Micah, the town of Bethlehem is referred to as Ephratah, which is also the hometown of King David, who unified the kingdom of Israel. It was a small village about 80 kilometers south of Jerusalem, and it was also the birthplace of Jesus. Next, we see that the wise men, those who were skilled in astrology, predicted that a future king would arise, and they began to seek him. When King Herod heard about this, he secretly planned to kill the king. He told the wise men that if they found the child, they should worship him and report back so that he could also worship him. But what was King Herod's true purpose? His true intent was to find and kill the child to secure his own throne. Looking at this story, not only the people of Israel, but also King Herod misunderstood the meaning of the Bible. They thought Jesus came to rule physically, but they didn't understand that he came to lead the people of Israel spiritually. In this passage, there are two groups of people, King Herod and the wise men. King Herod plotted, but did not reveal his plans to the wise men. The wise men, when they found the child, were warned by an angel in a dream about Herod's plot. When they found the place where Jesus was born, they offered their most precious treasures, such as gold, symbolizing their reverence. This was a custom of the Israelites, to offer their most valuable gifts to the one they worship. Does this story of King Herod and the wise men remind us of a similar event in the Bible? During the time of Moses, there was a similar event when an order was given to kill the male infants to eliminate the future king, and the same happened during Jesus' time. When reading the Bible, we need to connect past events to better understand the purpose of the word. This story mirrors the time of Moses, as mentioned in Jeremiah. Does anyone remember the story of Rachel? Thus saith the Lord, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children refused to be comforted for her children, because they were not. Rachel was one of Jacob's two wives. She had difficulty bearing children and had two sons, Joseph and Benjamin. But why does the Bible say she wept because she lost both of her children? Though Rachel gave birth to Joseph due to the jealousy of his brothers, Joseph was sold and presumed dead. As for Benjamin, Rachel died immediately after giving birth to him. Thus, she never had the chance to hold her children. And that is why the Bible records that she wept bitterly. She lost both of her sons. Amen.